we don't know everything, but uh, what we know is uh, these patients uh, have a high incidence of connective tissue abnormality, and uh, aortic aneurysm uh, is a manifestation of that connective tissue uh, abnormality that involves the most vulnerable part of the aorta, which is the ascending aorta. And you can see this is a uh, complete resection of the ascending aorta, so the entire ascending aorta is removed. Uh, in this slide, there is a similar situation. It's another patient with the um, heavily calcified bicuspid aortic valve, and the entire ascending aorta is removed. You can see there's a ruler here. It's about uh, three inches or so, um, somewhere about nine centimeters in this particular case, uh, that the ascending aorta is removed. Bicuspid valve um, uh, comes all different degrees of damage to it. Uh, it can be heavily calcified. You can see how here the opening of the valve is, can be very small. So um, this can be okay when patients does the usual activity around the house. Um, they can, uh, usually the heart is just strong enough to pump about five liters of blood per minute through a hole like this. Uh, this just tells you how amazing is uh, hard. However, if they have to, let's say, uh, jog uh, down the block and uh, play at the professional um, uh, level, uh, then they might have to pump about up to 20 liters per minute. And it would be very hard to pump that much amount of blood and the heart gets very muscular and gets heavy and uh, enlarges. This is another bicuspid aortic valve, um, heavily calcified as uh, aortic stenosis, so-called. Um, similar situation, you can see a lot of calcium deposits. This is just a different form. And in this valve is um, moderate calcification of the aortic valve. Uh, there is a lot of relatively a better opening there, of course, and these patients can have combination of leakage as well as stenosis. Or bicuspid aortic valve can be completely normal, uh, functioning normal, closes well, and uh, opens normally. Uh, this is a pretty pliable bicuspid valve. This is a CTA. This is a 64 slice CT angiogram. Uh, that you can see aortic valve opens very nicely, quite pliable uh, leaflets. And here, uh, closes pretty well, and uh, there is not much of a regurgitation at all. The uh, technique of valve replacement for a damaged valve is pretty standard. Um, generally, valve is removed, and uh, a new valve is sewn in, sutures are placed, and valve is slid down to where it's supposed to be and here is valve is lower down to the aortic root you can see that the aorta is removed completely cut here so there's very little aorta left and with a suture line of the new dacron going way down toward this valve uh, pretty much one can eliminate most of the aorta um, here is a, an example of such situation that the aortic valve has been removed and a new dacron graft is placed in and uh, the part that is anastomosed to the aortic arch uh, is done already here. As you can see, this is a connection to a heart lung machine. and it is empty of blood and heart is empty. So this is the situation that patient is basically very cold, 12 degrees centigrade, there are ice packs around the head and patient is under secretory arrest uh, because this part, this anastomosis, uh, sewing the dacron graft to the aortic arch 
has to be in a bloodless field, just like replacing a water main to a house. You have to shut off the, the water system. And here, the whole blood circulation system has to be turned off, so this can be done in an expeditious manner. It's about, has a safety of about 30 minutes or so, and most of the time, this anastomosis um, can be done within about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. I think the, the shortest time we have done this was about nine or 10 minutes. Average is about uh, 15 minutes or so. And then the uh, patient is put back on heart-lung machine and then this background is sewn in to the aortic root, eliminating the entire length of the vulnerable aorta, which is the ascending aorta. Uh, 